Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Good to see you and thanks for joining me for another recipe. Now lately I've been having cravings for something super homey and satisfying and chewy and carb filled and nothing says that for me quite like jia jiang mian. Now this is a cheat version. I'll link a traditional recipe for the sauce down below but it roughly translates into fried sauce noodle. The sauce is fried, not the noodle. And if you can get this sauce under your belt, this cheats version is super quick, does not contain meat unlike the traditional one which you know both are good but that just takes a lot of time and sometimes you just want to eat so this is my version of a cheats jia jiao mian now here are some ingredients that you will need let's start off with our carb i'm using dried noodles here you'll want to use a wheat noodle that's traditionally what's usually used i have gone for a wide knife cut style noodle they are labeled a variety of things this one i have right now is called taiwanese style sliced noodle but essentially you want a wide thick noodle that holds a lot of sauce really well and just gets real satisfying when you're chewing on it so this is what i've been using and i really enjoyed this style of noodle then some cucumbers we're just going to slice it and dress it uh, i've got one from my mama's garden she's growing them real good now after a couple of years mine looks a little different a little spiky just a particular variety you'll need like one cucumber of such size if you're making a serving i am going to use shallots you can definitely use onion i recommend red you want some substance in your sauce especially because we're not using meat um, unlike the traditional version so you want something some substance in your sauce spring onions can't get away from those in chinese cooking and you want a few stalks um you want some chunky white parts and also some green parts you want to try and go for the chunkier spring onions if you can versus those really thin scrawny ones not good for sauce here comes the garlic i love garlic i hope you do too i'm going to take out a couple of cloves to use in the sauce you can vary this if you don't like a lot of garlic i think it just adds a little something to most things now, these two things are super important for the flavor and that authentic-esque taste. You're gonna go down the super scary Asian supermarket sauce aisle and look for a sweet sauce or sweet paste. Usually it's a sauce, usually it comes in a jar. It will make no sense, but look for the translation, use your Google Translate. It should be a sweet sauce. Then, I have decanted this, but this actually came in a bag sometimes they don't come in bags um sometimes they come in a jar but this is a broad bean paste it is not miso and it is not samjan so it's it's something very like chinese style you just have to look for it this is broad bean paste or bean paste these are two different things and you'll kind of need both of course you'll need soy sauce i'm using a light soy this is my hometown favorite pearl river bridge but i do recommend you go with a low sodium soy sauce you don't have to just a thought that's the one i'm using now this is my own little twist i have to put in a little dark vinegar this is a chinese style vinegar but i think you can definitely substitute for something like a balsamic and it should be just fine now you will need a small saucepan for making the sauce. I recommend one with high size just to keep everything contained and to prevent the spatter from going all over your stove when you are cooking because it will happen a little bit. I'm just, just putting that out there. You'll also need something to cook your noodles in. That's all this is used for. You can use a saute pan. You can use, you know, your microwave you can use whatever you got i'm just going to use a regular pot over here i love this one though it has little drainage holes on the lid super helpful you also need your basics like a knife and a cutting board now i'm showing you how to do this in order of clarity and ease of understanding not necessarily speed but if you can multitask and cook the noodles at the same time you can easily get this done in 20 minutes First, we're going to start off by rough chopping all of the things that will go into the sauce. Here, I'm using one decently sized shallot, cutting it into chunks. None of this has to be precise. Of course, you can replace it with a bit of red onion. Also, I'm using one to two cloves of garlic. I'm going to give it a quick smash, peel the skin, and again, rough chop it. Because this is all going in the sauce, I wanted everything to be a bit chunky, which is also great if you don't have excellent life skills. Like either one is fine. We're calling it rustic and it will work just fine. That's also part of what makes it so quick. 
Now, green onions. I have split the bottom half of the stalk from the top, the bottom being mostly the whiter parts of the onion. Um, you'll put this in separately from the top greener part, so you want to kind of cut them separately and store them separately just so they don't all go in all at once. I'm using about a sprig and a half of green onion or spring onion, depending on where you live and what you call it. The greens, a little bit more so than the white parts, these will go in separately, in separate stages of making the sauce. So do make sure you separate them separately. <laughs> Now, I am pulling out the mandolin. Someone once gave me flack about using a mandolin, but I say use the tools to make your life easier because I cannot julienne these as fast as I did that right here on the mandolin. But be careful, use whatever you want. Use the knife if you've got great knife skills. You want to cut these either into thin slices or into matchsticks or into julienne bits. I'm going to dress this totally optional with a little bit of sesame oil just to let it marinate and hang out while I make my sauce and cook my noodles. You don't have to do this part. Um, this is up to you. If you want to, dress it and then set it aside. You are now ready to get going on the sauce. Starting with your saucepan on medium to medium low heat. Add in one to two tablespoons of oil. You could start with one and then add some more. I'm throwing in the chopped shallots as well as the garlic. Now you'll want everything to start sizzling but not to burn. So do watch your heat and then it might also depend on what kind of pots and pans you're using. It conducts heat a little differently. Mix this around and also throw in the white part or the, the rough chop ends of your spring onion and just let everybody hang out in there and get super aromatic and just Fill up your kitchen with the nice smells. Again, watch out so it doesn't burn, but you're looking for like a good sizzle. So do adjust your heat as you see fit. This is what should be happening. You're looking for a little bit of crispiness around the edges. It takes about maybe one to two minutes to get to this stage. Be patient and do not walk away from your pan. Once you get about here, it is time to fry the sauce, the main part of this dish. I am starting off with the broad bean paste. Now this is really adjustable depending on how you like it. The first time you make it, I suggest that you do one and one, one part of the bean paste and one part of the sweet sauce. I personally prefer a one and a half bean to one part sweet or even two bean to one sweet. It really depends on you. So. Start off with a safe amount and then adjust as you like. Um, I think for people who haven't had or tried the bean paste, the flavor is quite particular and a bit more intense. So that's why I do suggest a one-to-one -to, -one to begin with. I'm using like a giant spoon. I'm gonna call it about like a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half, one-to-one -one ratio. Then with the heat, watching the heat, you are going to fry this sauce. Now at this stage, if you feel like you don't have enough oil, add a little bit more. Ooh, side note, you want to use peanut oil or canola. That's what's preferred in Chinese cooking. Nothing like avocado or olive because it just gives off too much flavor. Here I'm doing two parts or about two tablespoons of light soy. Again, I recommend a low sodium if you have that and just keep on mixing and frying the sauce. I'm adding in just like a little splash, half a tablespoon of um, dark vinegar. I would actually bump this to a full tablespoon of vinegar because I think it actually does really well in the sauce. At the very end, turn down your heat or even turn it all the way off and throw in the greener parts of your green onion. And as you mix this around, it will just kind of cook off and soften. You don't want to overcook the sauce and you definitely don't want this to burn. Take it off your heat. Now it's time to cook your noodles. However you like, according to the package, you do want to cook it like pretty well through because we're just going to put the sauce over on top instead of you know cooking it down any further. But you don't want it to be like overcooked. You don't definitely don't want to be undercooked. So you cook based on experience or according to the package at the back. 
This is also a good time to let you know that you might notice I do not have ads in this video. I've disabled them all because I find it really annoying to watch a recipe and then get an ad in the middle, regardless of whether you have YouTube premium or not. This means I make no ad revenue from making this video. So if you want to support me in any way, you're welcome to share this with a friend, comment, like, tell people about my recipes. I don't make them often, but I do sometimes. And if you want to support me directly for my time and all the programs that comes with making videos, um, share a coffee with me over on coffee. There's no obligation to do so, but thank you for checking it out. My coffee account is downstairs in the info bar. Now, drain your noodles and we are going to put everything together. I'm gonna mix it all in this container just because I've already got it. I'm gonna throw it right on top of the cucumbers. It's fine. It won't overcook the cucumbers. You're just here for a minute, but you do wanna drain the noodles very well before you put the sauce in. Now, usually by this time, your sauce would have already cooled. This is why we want kind of a warm to hot noodle and then just a room temp sauce over top. It's not a noodle where you want to, you know, rinse it in cold water or anything. So just drain it out of the pot and throw it in your container or your bowl. You want to start off with just a little bit of sauce. It can get salty very quickly. So don't overdo it at the beginning. You want to mix this really, really well. You probably want to wear an apron because the sauce will stain. It's one of those, you know, greasy. I mean, greasy is not a bad word, right? Sometimes you just want that home comforting food, you know, childhood favorites. For me, this is it. The mixing does get a little messy, but for aesthetic purposes, I did transfer this to another bowl, so it looks a little cleaner when I show it to you. But oftentimes, to be honest, you guys, I just eat straight out of there and it is just fine and just as delicious. And here we are. I think this is best served hot or warm. And it's definitely a dish made for sharing. But you know, do put on apron. This is very hard to eat in a delicate way. It just kind of, it just kind of gets everywhere, but in, in a wonderful way. Um, I think this cheats version of Jia Jiang Mian embodies the essence and those key flavors without being complicated. And hey, you can make this fancier. You can put some tofu in there. You can put some shrimp. You could go, you know, old school and, and put some minced pork. And again, I'll put that traditional recipe down below by somebody else that is excellent, but just takes a lot more time. And this is like a 20 minute meal. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, look for all the details details and important information down in the info bar and I will see you again next time. Take care. Bye.